Hello, this video briefly covers quasi-linear utility functions, which describe consumer preferences that are linear in one good, but non-linear in the other good. A real-life example might be free time and food. Eventually, the increase in utility derived from eating food might diminish as more food is eaten. But the increase in utility from having more free time might remain the same, regardless of how much food is eaten. Free time would be the linear good, and food would be the nonlinear good. The equation of the marginal rate of substitution, the MRS, has only one of the goods expressed in it, not both. This means that the impact on utility is fixed in terms of one good, but the impact on utility is changing in terms of the other good. A consequence of all of this is that the indifference curves are parallel. This is the general equation for a quasi-linear utility function with goods x and y. Assuming x is nonlinear and y is linear, utility is equal to function of x plus c times y. Note the following. Function of x is such that its first derivative is bigger than zero and second derivative is less than zero. This allows x to exhibit diminishing marginal utility and therefore leading to a convex indifference curve. More about this later. C is a constant greater than zero in order for y to be a good that gives positive utility. Finally, note, alternatively, x could be linear and y nonlinear. This is the example we will be working with. Utility is equal to root x plus y. Here is our example once again. There are a few things we should note. First of all, we have assumed in this case that the function of x is the square root of x. Just note that there are other possibilities and other functions we could have used, provided its first derivative is positive and second derivative is negative. That is, x needs to exhibit diminishing marginal utilities. Otherwise, the indifference curve would be concave to the origin. For example, if the utility function was utility equals x squared plus y, then the indifference curve would look like this. Now there's nothing really wrong with this, except it says that as consumption of x increases, the increase in utility changes by an increasing amount. That is generally not how preferences behave with respect to goods. Normally we get less and less utility from each successive consumption of the same good. In a way we get sick of it. Therefore, as a general requirement, the nonlinear good needs to exhibit diminishing marginal utility. In this utility function, x is nonlinear and y is linear. How can we tell? Let's determine the marginal utilities and see what we get. The marginal utility of x is the derivative of u with respect to x. We can see that as x increases, the marginal utility decreases. In other words, x exhibits diminishing marginal utility. This can also be verified by taking the second derivative and confirming that it is negative. The utility is increasing at a decreasing rate for good x. Hence, we can say that x enters the utility function non-linearly. Let's look at the marginal utility of y. This is the derivative of u with respect to y. This is simply 1. So, utility increases by 1 for each additional increase in y. The main point here is that utility is increasing at a constant rate. It doesn't depend on how much y or x is being consumed. This is what makes utility linear in terms of y. So what does the indifference curve for our quasi-linear example look like? Note that in this case, x or y can be zero, so there will be x and y intercepts. The MRS is the negative of the slope of the indifference curve. So returning to fundamentals, the slope of the indifference curve is rise over run, or change in y over change in x. Using our utility function, we can express this as change in utility over change in x, multiplied by change in y over change in u. The first term is just marginal utility of x, and the second term is 1 over the marginal utility of y. So MRS is MUX divided by MUY. Note that the MRS only has x in it and no y. The linear good, y, is absent. The consequence of this is that the indifference curves are parallel to each other.
as x increases, the MRS decreases. But as y increases, the MRS is unchanged. The Niffin's curve will be as follows. Since each indifference curve is based on a given amount of u, the intercepts can be determined by treating the u as constant and writing the equation as y equals u minus square root of x. Setting x equals 0 and solving for y gives the y-intercept. Setting y equals 0 and solving for x gives the x-intercept. A second indifference curve is shown at a higher utility level called u2. The slope of the indifference curves are identical at every given level of x. In other words, the vertical distances are the same. The indifference curves are parallel to each other. You may be wondering how quasi-linear indifference curves are visually distinct from Cobb-Douglas indifference curves. To illustrate the distinctions, here are indifference curves at four utility levels for a Cobb-Douglas utility function where utility is equal to square root of x times square root of y. Compare this with the indifference curves at four utility levels for a quasi-linear utility function, where utility is equal to 5 times root x plus y. The main point to notice here is that as x increases, the gap between the Cobb-Douglas curves is getting smaller and smaller but it is constant in the quasi-linear curve. That is, if you pick a random value of x, you can see that the vertical difference between the indifference curves in the quasi-linear function is constant, whereas it's not constant in the Cobb-Douglas curves. So what is the gap in the quasi-linear indifference curves? Based on this quasi-linear function, the marginal utility of y, which is the derivative of u with respect to y, is 1. In other words, there is a 1 to 1 relationship between u and y. Keeping x fixed, since the utilities are increasing by 20 units in this example, the y values are also increasing by 20 units. This is true for all levels of x. In other words, the indifference curves are parallel. The indifference curves are not parallel in the Cobb Douglas function. More generally, Indifference curves in quasi-linear will be horizontal or vertical translations, depending on which axis the linear good is plotted on. In this particular case, the curves are vertical translations since the linear good, y, is on the vertical axis. And that concludes this brief lesson on the quasi-linear utility functions.